Wardrobe for the Bass Tour Anglers podcast is brought to you by Basco Fishing. High-performance fishing apparel that can be customized to fit your needs. Do you need to showcase your brand? Does your business need apparel? Do you need a tournament jersey? Visit their website at www.bascofishing.com. We'll get those live fish zipped and clips, strap down those rods, and stow away those tackle bags because we are going fishing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bass to Anglers podcast. I'm your host, Keith Nicewanger, and I hope this episode finds you with five for 25 in your live well. In a recent interview that I did with uh, Josh Bertrand, the winner of the Juan Bass U.S. Open, uh, Josh dropped a nugget on us that I thought was really, really good and I wanted to separate that from the interview and and make it a nugget of its own because it's really what it is. This is some really good stuff that he's he's talking about. You know, there's a lot of controversy about forward-facing sonar and live time electronics. Uh, let's get past that, okay? It's here. It's here to stay. It is making our fishing better. I think we're in contact with fish that we've never been in contact with before. That's good. It's going to take pressure off the bank. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to force old guys like me to learn new tricks, but why not? The thing that, that I like about the live facing sonar is you can fish a bank and you'll catch those fish off the bank if they're feeding. Okay. You'll catch them if they're feeding. Um, but you can go and find an offshore offshore school that's grouped up, and you can actually get those fish to start committing and start competing with each other. I don't think that happens on the bank very often. I think bank fish are feeding fish, and I think fish that are offshore can be triggered to start biting. So, like it or don't like it, live facing sonar, it's the newest thing, and I think it's great. Uh, take a look at. Take a listen to what Josh has to say about how he identifies bass from other species of fish. It's an absolute gold nugget. Yeah, you know, um, I, in practice, I had caught, I made a conceited effort to go shallow endy, go back and forth. And um, the, the biggest factor for me, I would say, when I was out deep was having confidence in my drop shot and my bait. And having confidence in the live scope, you know, I, I feel like I've put a lot of time in looking at live scope for sure. And, um, you know, I've been lucky. I've been doing it all summer up north, you know, on tour. So there's no rust at all, right? Like I'm, I'm as sharp as I'll ever be at it because I've been doing it for the last two months, looking at these smallmouth, and, um, you know, I could tell the difference between a carp and a catfish and a bass, and that was wow. a really big deal. Um, and I think, you know, maybe. If, if a guy hasn't put quite as much time in, it might be hard to tell the difference yeah. between certain types of fish. And if you spend a lot of time pitching at carp and catfish, you know, you're, you're have less time to put it in front of a bass. Right. right. So, um, 
I do, I, live scope was a big factor. Um, there were some fish that I caught that I saw either on 2D or maybe just cast up to a good piece of structure. Yeah. But I would say more fish than not, I did see before catching for sure. Hey, maybe, maybe you could drop a nugget on us right here. I mean, when you're looking at live scope and you're talking about being able to tell the difference between a bass and a carp and a catfish, a, a tip or two about that. What, yeah. What's the difference? Sure. I mean, that's a good, it's a good question. And a lot of it comes to just getting the trained eye and practice. Yeah. Right. And, and, but there are some key giveaways and, and what's funny is every lake, it's going to be different because you have different types of, um, you don't want to call them a, a rough fish, but a, I just use that term, um, for this example, you yeah. know, bass compared to another species of fish, whether it's a catfish, a carp, a walleye, a um, drum. drum. Yeah. Yep. The bass are going to be always a little bit more of a solid mark because they're really dense fish, especially smallmouth. The smallmouth are so muscly and meaty that, you know, when you see one on your live sonar, I use live scope, it's going to be a uh, a better echo you're going to have a more solid white dot like whereas, a bright star yes I, yeah. that's a great way wow. to describe it it sounds like you're pretty familiar with it too but yeah it looks like I, a i've seen a star. few but i cannot i cannot sit here and tell you i could tell the difference but but when you're talking the way you're talking it make it's making sense and i i know that what i've seen are really bright stars on that scope and mm -hmm. that makes sense it's it's very uh it's it's very apparent it's brighter um it's a harder return whereas the the other fish are going to leave a duller return. I've seen um, that too. The they, yeah, the way that they position for sure, right? Like, um, and size, right? I mean, hey, if it's a if it's a twenty pound carp, it's going to look a lot bigger than a three pound smallmouth. Yeah, obviously, right? Yeah. But um, you know, the way they position, you know, and and the, this is something that you have to learn every time, every new body of water at every time, right? Because. One week, the smallmouth might be packed up. The next week, they might be roaming by themselves. And same with the carp and catfish. One thing that was really interesting at um, Mojave this week was the catfish were really schooled up. So, like, you you would see a school of these catfish and think the first couple of times, it's like, look at that school. Oh, my God. You pitch in, catfish. And uh, you learn. You do that a couple of times. And then, ultimately, you start to see that school, that, that and you don't pitch into them. Now, right. and, you know, you if you're not sure you pitch, if you're yeah. not sure you throw at them. Right. Yeah. But, um, I think, and that was probably a big advantage for a couple of the other guys. Like I know Spencer is one of the best, um, you know, forward facing sonar fishermen on the planet. And, uh, I guarantee he wasn't wasting time pitching at fish that weren't bass. <laughs> that's really, really cool. That's a, that's a, that's a great little nugget. We may splice that out and, and put that up as a single, because uh, cool. I mean, I have watched so many live scope, tutorials and things like that and i don't know that i've had any heard anybody explain it the way you just described that's pretty pretty good well again that was short very sweet i think some of the things that josh talks about are just crucial i mean the density of a, of a of a bass yeah they're muscly yes they're going to be more dense yes they're going to reflect a more bright more distinct um, readout on your live electronics. I don't know how many people have thought about that, but that is a really excellent point that he makes. I hope you find that useful, and I hope you're out there fishing for bass and not carp and other types of fish that you really don't want to catch. Until next time, keep both hands on the wheel, keep those live fed zipped and clips, stay safe, and we'll talk to you again very soon.